Good day, Grade Elevens. Welcome to this nice lesson in Week 33. In this week, we've been talking about the lithosphere and how we, as humans, on the Earth, as and specifically in South Africa, have been exploiting the lithosphere. So we know the lithosphere is basically the top layer or crust of the Earth and also the oceans, and we know that we've been getting out of some very van valuable minerals. Um, one of the other things that we get out of the Earth's crust and the oceans, which is very important, are fossil fuels. And our fossil fuels are oil, our gas, and our coal mining. And that's really, really important because obviously this is where we get all our power, our electricity from. So what I want to do is we're going to watch a video now on fossil fuels. Next week, we'll talk about the impact of all this mining and exploiting the sphere. Um, and how what that impact is on Earth and on human beings. So let's go watch this video. Hello, Grade 11s. Fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and gas are our main sources of energy. So how do we get them from the Earth? And what would life be like without them? Let's hear from KK again. We are so used to having immediate light or heat when we flick a switch, petrol or diesel when we visit the petrol station, instant heat from a stove that we tend to take our energy supply for granted. In today's lesson, we will look at the energy we derive from fossil fuels. So how important is coal in the South African economy? Coal is South Africa's most important energy resource. Our reserves amount to 38 billion tons. We are the third largest exporter and the sixth largest producer of coal in the world. Coal is the third highest earner of foreign exchange for South Africa. Our reserves are spread over 700 kilometers from north to south and 500 kilometers from east to west. This is an enormous area. The Whitbank area in Pumalanga has the country's most productive coal mines. The majority of the coal we produce is used locally to generate electricity for making liquid fuels and chemicals. KK will talk to someone who knows a lot about the subject. Good day, Professor Kane Cross. Thank you so much for having us. Now, we all know that coal is a black hard substance that burns really well. But could you please tell us more about where it comes from and what its characteristics and properties are? Yes, that's true. Coal is a rock. Uh, it's a sedimentary rock. But it's got this very special property that we can actually burn it and for that reason it's one of the main sources of energy that we have not only in South Africa but in the world. And the thing about coal also, if you look at its composition, it's made up mainly of carbon and hydrogen uh, and oxygen. And for that reason that's why it's actually combustible. If we want to know why the coal is the way it is today, one has to in effect go back in time to see how it originally formed. And if we look at a map here on the wall, this is a map of the geology of South Africa. For example, all of the colors that you see here are different kinds of rocks. Johannesburg, where we are, is here, and coming down to the coast down here is Durban. Now, if we look at the distribution of the coal, the main areas is in this curved area around this part of the geology here. And in fact, this large area is called the Karoo Basin. If we go back in time, 280 million years. At that time in South Africa, this was one large um, an inland sea at the time. This would have been the edge of the ocean, so to speak, like the shoreline, and it was here that we had the formation of our swamps, because that's where coal actually comes from. It's an organic rock, and it comes from uh, the fossilized remains of um, these ancient plants that were growing in swamps. But you need special conditions, because if you just have plants growing and they die, you don't have anything. It's like a compost heap. So therefore they have to be growing in a swampy area which is underwater. And then they would die, they would fall underwater, they would be preserved from oxidation, they would get covered in time with more and more sediment, and then actually get preserved. And that, from the plant, early plant stage, goes into the next stage, which is called the peat stage, where the plant gets transformed into peat, and then over more and more time and uh, higher temperatures, the peat gets transformed to coal. And that process is actually called biochemical coalification, where we're going from the plants to the peat to the coal. Now if we talk about coal, there's actually three things that we need to explain. It's the rank, it's the type, 
and it's the grade. The coal rank is this process of going from plants to peat to bituminous coal to anthracite. And that involves changes in the chemistry of the coal and that needs pressure and an increase in the temperature. The coal grade, the second thing, is the impurities in the coal. Because coal isn't just made up of that organic material, there is also inorganic material in there. Clay particles, sand particles, that may have been in the swamp at the time. And then the third property is the coal type. Because remember we said coal is a rock. So just like any other rock, like a granite or a sandstone, it is made up of tiny particles, but they are not minerals as the other rocks are. They are tiny particles of the original plant material. And depending on the types of plant material, that determines the coal type. So actually, you can see now, I think, that coal, although it's a, some people see it as a dirty black rock, is pretty complicated if you look at its um, chemistry and uh, how it actually formed. So, Professor, oil and gas, would those also be fossil fuels? Yeah, oil and gas are definitely also, and in fact in the energy scenario of the world, oil obviously is a very important source of energy. But the origin of oil and gas, uh, the conventional gas, is totally different to the origin of coal. Coal comes from the formation of land plants, whereas oil originates from millions of tiny microscopic organisms that were floating around in the ocean at the time. So oil has a marine origin. These tiny organisms were in the ancient oceans, they were dying, they would sink to the bottom of the ocean, they would accumulate there in the millions, and then over time they would get covered with clay and mud. So you end up with a layer of marine organic sludge or slime, actually so to speak. And the more and more we buried that under the sediment and it got compacted, over time that those organisms and the, and the oils that they contain in them get transformed into an oil deposit. How do we mine our coal resources here in South Africa? Now, in South Africa we're very lucky because our coal is virtually lying today as it was deposited millions of years ago. And by that I mean it's deposited in horizontal layers or bands and we call them seams, a coal seam. If they were deformed or geologically folded it makes the mining fairly complicated and expensive. The second thing about our mining is that most of the coals that we mine here in this area, the Free State, the Whitbank, and into KwaZulu Natal, are fairly shallow. If the seams are about 70 to 80 meters under rock, then we can use an open cast type of a process. And what happens there is that a coal mining company will open up a strip. They would blast the rock, which they call the overburden. It would become all loose and broken up and fragmented. The drag line, which is like a massive big scoop, like a big back actor, would come along and scoop that up and tip it on the side and open up the big cut or the trench. And then they would expose the top of the coal seam. Then the next stage is they would go down and they would drill the coal and they would then actually blast the coal to break it up a bit, to fragment it. And then they'd come in with shovels and trucks and they scoop out the coal, they load it onto trucks and they take it away. Then once they've completed that cut, then the drag line comes along, it scoops again the rock that it has actually taken out, it refills that cut, it rehabilitates it, and it takes out the next one. And so the open pit mine moves along progressively until they've completed the whole mining operation. Now you can't do that if the coal is too deeply buried. And if the seams are deeper than 70 meters, then how do you mine them? Then what they do is they go underground to mine it. And there's two ways to mine coal underground. The first is by what's called board and pillar, or room and pillar. They basically, depending on what the mining engineers decide, support the roof, the top part of the coal underground, by squares or pillars of coal that they leave in place to hold the roof up, and then they mine out the areas between. The other way of mining underground, and now we're talking about coals that are more than about 80, to 100, about 80 meters below surface, is a technique called long wall mining. In that particular technique, they take out all the coal. They don't leave any pillars to support the roof. And the process is, it's almost in a simplistic way, like a bread, bread slicer, where they have a machine that comes along and it cuts the side of the coal, and the coal falls onto a conveyor belt, and it's removed out. And as that advances down the coal face, they collapse the roof behind, and so they move down. Um, that's a pretty effective way of mining if you don't have any geological faults or, 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 or any geological problems in your coal seam.
We have seen how important our coal reserves are, but what about oil? Another fossil fuel that is important to us is crude oil. Can you think of a few liquid fuels that we use on a daily basis? Did petrol and diesel spring to your mind? We use petrol to run cars and diesel to run trucks and some cars and heavy machinery. Jet fuel is used in airplanes and helicopters, while paraffin is used in households for light and heat. Crude oil is used to produce liquid fuels. South Africa has some working oil fields off the south coast. Together these supply between 9 and 12 percent of our crude oil needs and some natural gas. Sasol converts coal to synthetic liquid fuels, however most of our oil needs are met by imports from the Middle East and Nigeria. Crude oil is pumped from underground to the surface. First, a hole has to be drilled into the reservoir rocks containing the oil. The oil rig is a superstructure that carries the load of the drill bit and the drill string. It also houses the machinery to rotate the drill bit and lengthen the string as the hole or well becomes deeper. The smallest oil well can have a diameter of about 12,5 centimeters and the largest can be up to 70 centimeters across. After the hole has been drilled, a metal casing is cemented into it. This is used as a passageway to drill deeper and for installing more casings. The casings get smaller and smaller in width the deeper the hole becomes. The casing actually in contact with the oil reservoir has holes in it so that the oil can seep into the well. Acid is used to crack the rock so that a pathway for oil movement is created. Tubing is packed into the casing. The tubing ranges from 6 cm to 17.5 cm. This narrow tubing will increase the speed of oil flow. The oil moves because the surface pressure is low. It moves from a high pressure to a low pressure. If the difference in pressure is not great enough, a pump has to be used to help the oil to the surface. Now KK is off to Sassel to find out about refining the oil. Well, here we are at Sassel. Let's go in. Dr. Rufus Wesley, thank you so much for talking to us. Could you please explain to us how crude oil is made into usable products through the refining process? Crude oil itself is not a very useful substance, but it consists of many useful hydrocarbons. Now, these hydrocarbons need to be separated from each other, and the process that we use to do that is called fractional distillation. Now, it is called fractional distillation because when we separate these hydrocarbons, they are separated into batches. Now, these are um, hydrocarbons that have got similar properties. Now, these batches are called fractions, and therefore the process is called fractional distillation. In South Africa, we have four refineries in Cape Town, in Devon, and in Sasselbeck. At a refinery, we've got long columns at which you can see uh, pipes coming off different lengths of the different heights of your of your of your columns now these pipes are used to to carry away uh, uh, um, your hydrocarbons as we separate them from the other fractions in the first step of fractional distillation crude oil is heated carefully and um, when the boiling point of um, the first fraction is reached that fraction boils, evaporate, and moves up the, up, up the column, and it's carried away uh, uh, through the pipes, allowed to cool and condense. The first fraction is a hydrocarbon with less than four carbon atoms. It's a colorless gas, and it boils at temperatures below room temperature. This gas is cooled until it is liquefied, and it's stored in bottles in the form of li liquid petroleum gas, what we normally call LPG. Now this is what we buy and use in our homes for heating, cooking, and lighting. When crude oil is heated further to temperatures of about 30 to 200 degrees Celsius, the next fraction with the next boiling point evaporates through the column. The next fraction consists of 
gasoline or what we call petrol. Now this is an orange liquid and consists of 5 to 10 carbons per molecule. Naphtha forms an important part of this fraction and it's used in the development of plastics. The next fraction is called kerosene and it boils at temperatures between 180 and 260 degrees. It is a yellowish liquid and um, its compound consists of 10 to 16 carbon atoms per molecules and it is used for heating like in the case of paraffin and it's also used as a jet fuel for aeroplanes. Brown diesel consists of hydrocarbons that consist of 14 to 20 carbons per molecules. Now this boils at temperatures between 260 and 350 degrees Celsius. Now this fuel is used in lorries and trains and it is also used as fuel in generators. The bit that's left behind is called residue and it can be used as fuel for ships and power stations or it can be distilled further in which case it will give rise to other hydrocarbons and this happens at temperatures above 350 degrees Celsius. Some of the products from further distillation are lubricating oil, waxes and Vaseline. The final, final leftover being bitumen which is a black in color and is used to tar our roads. Dr. Wesley, here is a table showing us the percentage distillation yield for the crude oil that South Africa distills. Now, from this table, I can see that the distillation process produces more diesel than petrol. Tell me, is there a way we can use the residue to solve our petrol shortage problem? Yes, certainly. Um, the carbon chain in the residue are very long, you know, and they consist of more than 20 carbon atoms per molecule, like what I have here for instance. These molecules are broken into smaller molecules through a process called cracking. Now cracking is achieved by heating the molecules in the presence of a catalyst. The heated molecules then start to move faster and collide with one another. When the temperature is increased further, eventually the molecules break up into smaller molecules. Some examples of smaller molecules that result from this process are octane and ethane. Octane consists of eight carbon atoms per molecule, while ethane consists of only two. Ethane is used in the production of plastic, while octane is added to the petrol fraction, and in this way, increase the volume of petrol, and that helps us to meet the increasing demand of our petrol. Thank you so much for talking to us, Doctor. I'll definitely think twice next time I fill up with petrol. Well, Grade 11s, I hope you now know everything that you need to know about the oil, the gas, and the coal mining in South Africa. You need to know and realize how important fossil fuels are because it is a source of energy, main source of energy in South Africa and the world, and therefore it is a very important product. Um, I hope you also understood and made sure that you understand the fact that coal is open cast mining mainly and then secondly that the oil that we get has to be fractionally distillated and grade 11 I'm sorry to say you are going to have to learn the order that those things are fractionally distillated in so for example that the coolest are your gases and the hottest down below is your bitumen right please go and make sure you understand all of this and then do the questions at the end of the assessment have a great day <laughs>